What's up guys? It has been like two weeks since I filmed anything for this channel. Um, there's been a lot that's gone down in that time, a lot of new music that's come out. Uh, personally, I cracked my back molar and had to end up getting emergency dental work and getting that tooth fixed up. That was annoying and dramatic. I got uh, more active on TikTok. Uh, someone in the subreddit set up a Discord, so I'm learning how Discord works. I dyed my hair teal, which was a huge mistake and was way harder to get out of my hair. I thought we were talking like a three-day thing here. I should have read the box more carefully. I got my new Flatland Cavalry shirt to support one of my favorite bands during this time of quarantine. I got a cameo, so if you want a little birthday present or something, some personalized message from me, you can go search over there. You guys really enjoyed the decade retrospective videos, and maybe we might have one more with some of your picks in it down the road. But first, I want to knock out a bunch of new music that came out during this time. I don't know how long I'm going to do these giant roundups just because frankly it's crazy to try to cover every single song that comes out there are so many releases from every album now like people are putting out five or six instant grat tracks from some of their albums and the idea of covering all those plus all the new singles that come out and trying to do nashville and the red dirt scene and trying to just get all of this stuff covered is nuts and there's no way i can keep up with it it starts to stress me out and then uh I don't ever want this to not be fun for everyone, but for now, I actually think they're kind of fun. And I'm going to stick with the same Yeehaw versus Yeena format that I had before. That was simple, it worked well, and there's a lot of music to talk about, so let's get into it. First up is More Than My Hometown by Morgan Wallen. I love you more than a California sunset. This is a crowd favorite that he's played acoustically before and there's some viral videos of him doing that on the internet. I can't say for sure that it's like a big single that's going to radio, but it seems like that is the case and it's certainly selling and streaming very well. At one point on Apple Music, I know Morgan Wallen between this song and Heartless and Chasing You and something else, he had the top four songs on Apple Music Country. So. The guy is kind of like the next superstar. It feels sort of like how Luke Combs did a year ago when you just knew that as soon as he put out his sophomore album, it was going to be gigantic. As far as this song, I like it. I don't love it. The things I love about it are the production, surprisingly. I think Joey Moy is really growing as a producer. I really like the way he's kind of pulling back some of his heavy percussion that he's often put onto songs. He's letting the instrumentation breathe a little bit, and I think Morgan Wallen's voice is captured beautifully on this song. Um, Morgan Wallen, when you go back and watch like his auditions on The Voice, has this crazy growly voice that it's kind of got this smooth, almost R&B agility to it. Like He can go up into his falsetto and then kind of yell out this... Uh, scratchy sort of sound that's really cool. And out of the doubt that fills my mind. But I would say on his debut album, If I Know Me, that kind of got cleaned up a lot or it got layered over a lot. And on More Than My Hometown, I think it's the best version that we've had of his voice. And what's funny is I've heard from some of his fans that feel like this song is way overproduced. And I think that's just because they might be really accustomed to having heard the acoustic versions. I hadn't ever heard the acoustic versions till I heard the song, so I don't have the same experience. That said, I think lyrically the song is Okay, it's about loving this girl, but not loving her more than your hometown. And she's trying to go out to the Hollywood Hills, and this guy wants to live on a hill, not in those hills. And I think there is actually some clever wordplay. I like the whole map dot shame line. I think that's smart. But I also think the chorus is a bit of a checklisty song, but I think the production's good. All in all, I'm going to give it a light yeehaw, and I'm excited to see where Morgan Wallen goes from here. Then we got Parker McCollum's new single, Like a Cowboy. I ran from the cops in my soaked up Mustang. Parker McCollum is one of the buzziest people to come out of the Texas scene, and he signed a record deal with Nashville a couple years ago. He released a song last year that I wasn't crazy about called Pretty Heart. Nothing wrong with it, just nothing memorable about it either. But now he is putting out his second big major label single. This one's called Like a Cowboy. And if that sounds familiar to you, it might be because Randy Hauser had a song called Like a Cowboy, but it's not the same as that one. In fact, it's the same as one by a different Randy, Randy Montana, who once sang Like a Cowboy like a decade ago. This is a song that was co-written by Chris Stapleton. It's been a buzzy song within Nashville for years. 
and now Parker is putting it out, and I think it sounds great. This is a song that is simply imagining yourself as a cowboy, and how you're not as good as people want to think you are, and you're driving away in your car, and you're almost imagining, like, I could have been a cowboy. It's pretty simple, but I think most of us have felt that way at one point of our lives. Like, man, I could be someone that's just out on the run, riding into the sunset, misunderstood and brooding. And honestly, that is kind of the vibe of Parker's music as far as I understand it. You look at a song like Hell of a Year and a song like Pretty Heart and now Like a Cowboy, there's nothing especially fun and effervescent about these songs. He does this kind of melancholy, longing thing pretty well and his voice has a timbre that makes songs that otherwise could feel sort of droopy feel a lot more intense because there's a kind of readiness in his delivery. When I ride like a thief on I have sometimes jokingly said that Parker McCollum's music is good for the hashtag sad boys among us and like a cowboy fits with that too. I'll give it a yeehaw. Then we got Champagne Night from Lady Antebellum. So this is a song that Lady Antebellum made on the NBC show Songland, a show about songwriting and so it features 11 songwriters because you got the band, you got the judges on the show, you got the contestants and it feels like it has 11 songwriters. This is a very, very, very well written, lots of like smart little word choices all through the song, but generic party song about not needing champagne glasses because you're going to drink out of plastic cups. A lot of people think it sounds a little too close to Marin Morris's song Rich, and I think it's a fun but ultimately really shallow song about lifestyle branding as a country person. I think from someone else it could maybe work a little bit better than Lady Antebellum, but I feel like they've always framed themselves as these sort of a little bit more cosmopolitan type country stars that actually are hanging out in the city, that actually are covering themselves in diamonds and drinking out of champagne glasses. I mean, one of their biggest hits is a song called Bartender about drinking cocktails. And in the video, they are surrounded by crystal chandeliers. And then in this song, they're rejecting both of those. So I kind of find it hard to take seriously. And even though I really enjoy songwriting processes and seeing people tweak music and figure out how to make it as mass appealing as possible, a show like Songland that is meant to be about how do you kind of factory create a song rather than how do you express an individual perspective, it's gonna create songs like this that sound good, have some good words, and then ultimately feel a little bit hollow. So I'm gonna give this like a light ye na. Now that said, I think it is really cool that this song is clicking a lot with audiences. It's selling really well, and the label has responded by shelving Lady Antebellum's current single and saying, no, we're pushing this to radio. I like seeing that kind of nimbleness when it comes to country radio because typically labels get very dedicated to their own marketing plans and they will push a song that no one cares about for like a year and they will just keep telling radio to play it. Please play it. We'll give you extra tickets that you can use for a giveaway if you play our song. It's pretty corrupt. It's one step away from payola a lot of times, but I love seeing a label be nimble and say, you know what? We're switching. Lady Annabellum's current single, it's not doing that well. This one will be a bigger hit. I like seeing that. And then we have Brett Eldridge's new single, Gabrielle. Oh, was it your heart or mine? Was it just the wrong time? Brett Eldridge's career is so interesting to me because he had this big breakout first album where Don't Show was this huge single and then his album was selling really well and he kind of had this soulful voice on him. But then his second album didn't connect in the same way. And it was weird because he just sort of fizzled a little bit. Not like his career ended, but whereas him and Thomas Rhett started and Thomas Rhett just skyrocketed, Brett Eldridge just kind of had a sophomore slump. Then he released this Christmas album, Glow, and then he just sort of seemed to be a crooner that would sometimes do standards on things like the Today Show or on Christmas specials. But he went away for a few years and apparently unplugged completely from social media. And now he's come back with a few songs, the single of which is Gabrielle. Cinnamon skin, the sunshine. Stop time in the moonlight. I really, really like this song. It's got a way kind of smoother 70s vibe, but not that kind of 
annoying disco-y vibe that I've said many times on the channel I don't like. This feels a lot more inspired by Fleetwood Mac or something. He's working with Daniel Tashin and Ian Fitchuk, the production team that made Golden Hour among many other things. And I actually feel like the sound on this is a lot less smoothed out and polished and just a little more organic and rich. I really enjoy the sound of the song and the nice piano in it, and I think the lyrics feel much more personal for him. He's singing about this girl, Gabrielle, that got away, and just asking the questions of why that happened. I think his voice is allowed to shine, and you remember, wow, he's got some of that gruff soul in it, very similar to how I felt about Morgan Wallen's voice being able to show off. So I'm really happy with this release. I really think it's a heartfelt, great song. I'm not gonna talk about all the other songs on this little triplet of things he released, but it gets a yeehaw from me. Next up is a guy out of the Texas scene named Tristan Mayers. A lot of y'all have wanted me to listen to him for a long time. Well, I finally did with his new song, Forgot About You. Well, I just remember I forgot about you. I love this song. You know, one of the big discoveries for me musically this year is Randall King, and I really enjoyed Randall King. Have a whole video on that. And I think Tristan has a pretty similar sound, and that's a great thing. Tons of steel, tons of kind of classic Western vibes that are in here. I really like the lyrics of this song a lot because I think they're telling an interesting different story. This guy is driving and he sees an exit sign and it reminds him of an old flame of his and all these memories come flooding back. And then he says, I just remembered I forgot about you. And so he's kind of given himself some credit. Like it's not easy to get over someone, but maybe I'm finally actually getting over someone because I forgot that I was in this relationship with you. And even though he's experiencing all the memories, it's this like interesting mix of some self-validation with some pain. I love it. Big yeehaw from me. Then we've got the new song from Jana Kramer, Untouchable. Are you somebody who can stay? Jenna Kramer's discography is extremely hit and miss. Sometimes you get awesome songs like I Got the Boy. Sometimes you get horrible songs like Said No One Ever. And this one, I would say, is just sort of blandly in the middle of those extremes. I think the words of this are extremely simple, extremely broad, but if they were delivered with more gravitas, could feel really resolute. But... Jenna Kramer's voice is a lot more thin, and I just don't feel like this is delivered with a lot of heft. It's delivered with a lot of sweetness. And then when you add in kind of a poppier production as well, it just feels like a kind of non-inspiring, but trying to be inspiring throwaway ballad. So for me, it's a light ye na. Brad Paisley has a new single out called No I in Beer. So we're on this together. To me, it's all so this song is fun, it's very Brad Paisley, it's very kind of silly, it's all kind of hinging on one really fun chorus hook, which is that we're all in this together and we should all have a drink with one another because there's no I in beer, which is smart, it's fun, it's got all the great guitar that you've come to expect from Brad Paisley, all the kind of dad joke humor of it. It's likable, it's not earth shattering. I'll just give it a very light yeehaw. Diplo and Blanco Brown have put out a new song called do -Si do and let's talk about that next. So this is a song that is coming from Diplo's Thomas Wesley project. He's putting out this whole kind of country inspired EDM album and he grew up in Nashville and you know he does have roots there and some of these collaborations have been more successful than others. Certainly the biggest hit from this album has been his song with Morgan Wallen, Heartless. But now he is working with Blanco Brown, who continues his reign of terror across country music with his unpleasant voice and especially unpleasant voice on this song that is trying to be a TikTok anthem called do -Si do Favorite part of a honky tonk, them days of dukes and ba -donk, ba donk He kind of creepily speaks the verses about honky tonk ba donk donks and there's nothing to this song it's totally flimsy it is just meant to be a dance track even the video is just suggesting dance moves you could do because clearly they want this to be another version of the get up and just get people dancing to it it's a horrible example of this kind of meme country that we're entering we're starting to see songs in the pop sphere that are being released purely so that they can go viral on apps like TikTok, things like the 2C Slide by Drake. And you know, maybe it's not the worst thing in the world, but uh, it kind of feels like the worst thing in the world. So it gets a big old 
Yee Na from me. Definitely my least favorite song on here. Next, I want to talk about Co Wetzel's new song, which is spelled weird and it's called Country and Western. I think I've lost my fucking mind. So, Co Wetzel, as I've talked about on the channel before, kind of brings a Nirvana like energy. I think Parker and him both attract sort of fans that want to feel bad about breakups and maybe drink a little bit too much. But whereas Parker fans might want to text their girl late at night and say like, let's make things better. Co fans just want to keep drinking or maybe do drugs and really just bask in how bad they feel. And that definitely seems like it could be something you do to this song. It's got the same kind of heavy rock vibes and self-loathing that I've come to expect from him. I actually kind of like the sound. I don't think this is to me his hookiest or catchiest or cleverest of any of his songs. But it definitely rocks out. And so I'd give it just, I'd say, a standard ye. This one is Lee Bryce. He has a new song called One of Them Girls, which has the lyrics of a boyfriend country song, but the vibes of a bro country song. You one of them girls that ain't trying to meet nobody. I don't know how girls experience this, but as a guy, sometimes these songs where you just see another dude saying like, are you one of them girls that likes shooting pool? Are you one of them girls that likes drinking beer? Are you one of them girls that doesn't take any flirting from guys at bars? Saying you're not like all those other girls, but really the goal is just to get this girl. Sometimes it's like, can't you see through this? Isn't this kind of cringy? But I do think the melody is really strong. This is a hooky hooky song, but I don't love the lyrics. I think the production's a little bit better than usual. I don't know, I'm gonna give it somewhere between a blank ye and a ye nah. A few other songs I'm just gonna talk about really quickly. Kip Moore has a new song called Southpaw. Of the things that have been released from his new album, Wild World, I absolutely think this is the best of them. I love the production on it. I love the lack of an electronic drum on it. I like him describing his wild side. The song feels much wilder to me than Wild World. I give this one a yeehaw. Kenny Chesney's dropped a bunch of new songs. Knowing You is really solid. Guys Named Captain, I love. Find sometimes these really clever solo rights, like John Bauman's uh, Gulf Moon from his last record. And now he's got this song called Guys named Captain, which I just think is excellent. It's a kind of weird song describing guys that ride boats and what they're like and kind of their quirks. I think it feels really unique. It feels like something that really in the mainstream only Kenny Chesney could release. I love it. I like how strange it is. So yeehaw. And then there's so many instant grat tracks. I can't talk about all of them. American Aquarium's new songs have been good. Uh, Wade Bowen and Randy Rogers' new songs have been good. William Michael Morgan, he just put out a really good song called Cowboy Cool. Is there anything I'm missing? Oh, Gabby Barrett's song, I Hope, just got a remix uh, with Charlie Puth and... Eh. Rustin Kelly is the last person I want to talk about. He has a song called Brave that is beautiful. I loved Rustin Kelly's last album. He's described his sound as, I think, dirt emo. And he does have kind of country, folky, Americana vibes, but kind of this almost uh, dashboard confessional-ish, indie, filtered vibe to his music. This is a song that is kind of a lot like Cover Me Up, I think. I know he's talked about on Twitter that he goes to Narcotics Anonymous, N.A., and that he has been sober for a period of time. So it seems like this song is kind of a moment where he is looking at his own life and reflecting about how he is changing. And that's really cool to hear. So I really like this song. It's pretty subdued. I don't think it has the hook that Cover Me Up has, but I think it's absolutely gorgeous and important. And so I'll give it a yeehaw. So there we go, guys. That's just a bunch of songs I wanted to talk about. Let me know your thoughts on them. I know I missed a few, but uh, that's it. I got a bunch of videos coming up and you're gonna enjoy them. Later, guys. Thank you.